All right, so one of the things that we can do to use our ECGs for is to actually calculate heart rates. All right, so instead of taking a pulse and trying to calculate out heart rates, we can actually use our cardiac cycles all right, uh, in these ECGs in order to measure heart rates. And that's one of the things we're going to be doing in our lab activities is using these ECGs to calculate heart rates, number of beats per minute. All right, so here we have a couple traces of ECGs. All right, um, and back in the day, we used to use paper recorders as our uh, way of producing these ECGs. Now we use computers. Um, but on the graph paper, all right, what's represented on the graph paper here? You can see we've got these large boxes. So I'll draw one large box there. Then inside each large box, there are five smaller boxes. One small box is one square millimeter. Right, so it's a box with a, that's a millimeter on each side. Right, each large box right, is five square millimeters. Right, so five, five by five, right, a five by five box. Uh, so one small box is one square millimeter, a large box is five square millimeters. Right. The recording, when we make these recordings, the standard paper speed that uh, we use is actually at 25 millimeters per second. So do you have to know that off the top of your head? No, I really don't care if you know that off the top of your head. But what that does is it allows us to convert each one of these boxes into a piece of unit time, all right? into time. Right? One small box or one square millimeter equals, right, equals 0 0.04 seconds. So that makes the five square millimeter box 0 0.2, come on, two zero seconds. Okay. Uh, so 0.04 seconds in time is one square millimeter. Each five square millimeter box equals 0.2 seconds in time. So all of a sudden, now that we have a unit time for each one of these boxes, we can take a cardiac cycle and figure out how many cardiac cycles are occurring per minute. Right? Heart rate is number of beats per minute. Right, or number of cardiac cycles per minute. We know the P, Q, R, S, and T represent one cardiac cycle. So all we have to do is figure out now how many of these cardiac cycles, P, Q, R, S, and Ts, right, occur per minute. Right. The easiest way to do this right, is to count the number of boxes or the unit time between the same spot on two adjacent cardiac cycles. The easiest one to pick here is the R wave. So we're going to pick the top of the R wave. It makes this great little peak in order to help us uh, figure out a great, uh, a nice clean spot in order to count. All right. So I'm going to take and count the number of boxes in between these two R waves here. Uh, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, go back one, 19. So this looks to be about 18 boxes in between here and here. Okay, let's try it again. 5, 10, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, that's 18 boxes. All right. So 18 boxes for each cardiac cycle. All right. Doing all the math, right? Now the computers actually end up doing the math for you, but uh, the easiest way to calculate this out, calculate your heart rate, come on, take 1,500, divide it by the number of boxes. All right, so I'm going to come over here to my computer, 1,500, divided by 18. All right, heart rate on this guy is going to equal, all right, so 1,500 all right, divided by 18 right, is going to equal 83.3 beats per minute. Right. Um, so that's how we calculate heart rate. Right? 
Uh, so let's do it again for this one down here. Here we can see that there are much more cardiac cycles occurring per unit time, right? The cardiac cycles are much closer together, right? So we know that this is going to be a faster heartbeat, all right? So 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, black line, so 5, 10, 11, yep, between here and here is 11 again. Right, so we know that there are only 11 boxes per cardiac cycle on this one, right? So 1,500 divided by 11 is going to equal, ooh, this is a good one, right? Uh, 10, 1,500 divided by 11 this time, right, is going to equal 136. 136 beats per minute. So that's the easiest way to figure out heart rate, right? Count the number of boxes in between the two, the same event on two adjacent cardiac cycles. Easiest one to use is the R wave, right? Makes this great peak for us to uh, identify. Right? Count the number of boxes in between, count the number of small boxes in between. 1500 divided by the number of boxes is going to equal your heart rate. Right? So here we can say the um, difference between this one and this one is obviously much higher heart rate, so we can assume that the person went and went for a jog, right? did some exercise, did push-ups, did jumping jacks, whatever it is, came back, we hooked them up to the recording again, right? and we went from an 83 to 136, right? definitely has a higher heart rate could be due to exercise, could be due to a whole lot of other things, but that is how we would compare the two of those together.